Welcome back to Mass Effect 2, everybody. So, we have been exploring our new ship, the new Normandy. And uh, a swirling mass of information has been presented to us again, just when we thought we knew everything. Um, we've met a bunch more of the crew. <laughs> we met Kelly. We've met uh, what I'm going to call Edith, the, uh, the AI, ED. I'm going to call it Edith. It just sounds so much easier to say. Um, and it reminds me of what remains of Edith Finch, and I love that game. Um, we've met... Who else have we met? We spoke to Jacob and Miranda, got to know them a little bit more. We spoke to the engineering crew, the kind of cute little arguing couple, even though they're obviously not a couple right now. They're kind of best friends, I suppose, so maybe I shouldn't ship them like that. We met the kind of annoying chef, Dr. Chakwa is here, which is a bit weird. We spoke to Joker a bit. And yeah, we've got to know the ship. So uh, before we set off on one of our many missions, we've got a ton of stuff to read. Um, we need to catch up on the journal, just so I I'm aware of all the missions we're going on. But we need to read the codex first, so I'm going to have to mute our, our buddy boy, our friend. Okay, so non-council races. In the early 2160s. The vote is the collector. Living the Omega Four mass so relay and the sorry, terminus. friend. I am going to mute you. Um, okay. So, living beyond, yeah, the, yeah, they're like a predator. All right, living beyond the Omega Four mass relay in the terminus systems, the mysterious collector species is glimpsed so rarely as to be taken for a myth by most in galactic society. In reality, collectors are human-sized insectoid bipeds and can resemble massive winged beetles. They are a terrifying force in the galaxy responsible for the murder of hundreds of thousands. Collectors generate permanent stasis fields around themselves creating nightmarish red-shifted energy fields. In battle, they hold position wherever possible, relying on their aggressive biotics and nearly limitless power. Several types of bipedal collectors have been identified, including minions, defenders, zealots, assassins, and artillery operators. Acting together, collectors have imprisoned entire cities in stasis. While no definitive forensic accounting exists to explain the fate of those imprisoned, leading speculation, leading speculation is that victims are harvested for scientific experimentation and neural, neurobiological repurposing. Wow. These guys mean business. I mean, they're... Uh, it says that they're an insect that they're uh, insectoids, but like the way that the back of the head looks, kind of looks like a like a snake, right? Like a kind of big viper, and then it kind of turns more insectoid down after that. So it looks like just looking at this picture, that looks like kind of natural body armor. It doesn't look like a suit. That looks like natural armor. I could be wrong about that, or maybe they. I don't know. Yeah, it's probably just a suit. It might just be made of, 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 of different materials. It's probably a suit, right? Okay, these guys have been kind of defined as pretty, pretty evil here. No kind of qualms about experimenting on people and slaves and stuff. Disturbing. Right. Okay, the rise of the alliance. A political economic part pact for collective colonial security, the alliance is the central galactic institution of human society. The alliance gained associate membership to the Citadel Council in 2165 and full membership in 2183, with Ambassador David Anderson representing humanity. Human political economic relationships vary between combative and lucrative. The Turians who'd fought humans during the 2157 First Contact War have become valuable trade partners despite residual social hostility. Other relationships 
are even more complicated. The rapid rise of human political influence on the council, achieving in decades what others waited or are still waiting centuries to acquire, has galvanized suspicion and resentment against humanity. That negativity is vastly outweighed by the respect and trust humanity earned by saving the council during the 2183 attack on the citadel. At the cost of Alliance cruisers Cairo, Cape Town, Emden, Jakarta, Madrid, Seoul, Shenyang, and Warsaw, and their two and their two thousand and four hundred crew members. I guess that's our fault. Right? I guess a lot, a bunch of them would have been destroyed by Sovereign if we would have focused on them as well, but maybe not quite as many. Hmm. Okay, ships and vehicles. Uh, we'll read all of these, although I suspect we've already read the SR1. The Systems Alliance Space Vehicle Normandy is a prototype starship created as a joint human and Shurian venture. A frigate optimized for reconnaissance missions, the vessel uses state-of-the-art stealth technology. Most ships generate tremendous heat that, is, that, that is easily detectable against the absolute zero background of space. The Normandy, however, temporarily sinks this heat within its hull. Because of the exterior hull re refrigeration, the ship the ship can travel undetected for hours or drift passively for days of covert observation. The heat sinking carries the risk of cooking the crew alive if the stored heat is not eventually radiated. Yeah, we did read this in the first game. Also contributing to stealth is the Normandy's revolutionary Tantalus drive, a Mass Effect core double the standard size. The Tantalus generates massive concentrations that the Normandy falls into, allowing it to move without the use of heat emitting thrusters. Okay, the SR2, which is what we're in now, the uh, black and orange version. With elaborate secrecy, Cerberus laboured for years to build a new, superior Normandy. The vehicle's many alterations produced a craft nearly double the original size, acquiring an even larger Tantalus drive core Excuse me, to compensate. The new Normandy features greater space in living quarters. Research a, re, a research laboratory, observation deck, a cargo bay. It, its shuttle can make landings the Normandy cannot attempt. In addition to tight beam communicators, Normandy's quantum entanglement communicator provides instantaneous contact with the elusive man. The enhanced defense intelligence AI coordinates many of the ship's combat functions, assisting and even supplanting human piloting. Potential upgrades are numerous. The airframe could support additional armor, and an axial mass accelerator. The thrusts could support recent advances in fuel technology beyond um, H2O2 chemical rockets, and the hull can mount double the standard number of kinetic barrier projectors, leaving space for stronger shields and easily sustainable via the new ESO drive core. Okay, bigger, better, but can't come down to the surface. So it, does this replace the Mako? The UT-47 Kodiak Drop Shuttle. The Systems Alliance UT-47 Drop Shuttle landing craft holds 12 soldiers in a cramped, uncomfortable cargo bay and two more in the cockpit. Officially named the Kodiak, the Drop Shuttle is better known to Alliance Marines as the Combat Cockroach due to its appearance and durability. The vehicle's robust environmental sealant technology exposes few vulnerable parts to the elements. First tested in the sulfuric acid clouds and extreme temperatures of Venus, the Kodiak can land on in hard vacuum, high pressure and temperatures from near absolute zero to over 900 degrees Celsius. A true contragravitic gravi vehicle, the Kodiak's substantial element zero core allows flight by entirely countering the vehicle's mass. Its small thrusters are for directional control only, so if the mass effect field fails, the vehicle becomes a proverbial 3 million credit coffin. <laughs> the unarmed shuttle forgoes weaponry space for active masking, electronic countermeasures, and robust kinetic barrier system. It's ideal for dropping troops undetected. Okay, so maybe it doesn't replace Oop. the uh, the Mako. Maybe that's just the way we get down to the planet. Okay, sound please. Okay, we've got some secondary stuff. Okay, Cerberus, Project Overlord, the planet Ite. Ite. Two beautiful moons. Moons? 
two beautiful moons, one spectacular ring, and zero neighbours. ETA is a popular advertisement for this Terminus Systems world. ETA is known for its sparsely settled population despite being a garden planet with a colony nearly a century old. Blessed with a mild climate, wildlife no more dangerous than that on Earth, and soil and bacteria amenable to imported plants, ETA would appear to be an unexploited paradise. However, it's unpopular for two reasons. The first and most obvious is that its moon, uh, Lite, 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 Lite is, an is in an unstable orbit that will lead to a planetary impact and an extinction level event within the next two centuries. As such, all investment in the planet is short term, and the biggest business is selling off the local bio biota? Biota? I don't know how to say that. To the highest bidder. The second drawback is the level of violence on the planet. Like the rest of the Phoenix massing cluster, ETA was briefly considered part of Citadel space during its first wave of colonization. However, when the colony broke off to become an independent planet in 2133, the Council let the doomed planet go with less than a day of debate. Free from any real governing body, Ite's history has since been filled with wars between small frontier town city-states over its resources. The result is a dangerous world where the average citizen is expected to be self-reliant to the point of fending for themselves against cutthroat corporations, strong-armed militia groups, and even geth incursions. The fighting is so frequent that the name of the planet itself has changed more than 11 times. In a sign of blunt indifference, standard Citadel galaxy maps refer to the world by the name given to it by human colonists in the latter half of the century. Okay, so that is the Wild West right there. Right, technology. Uh oh. Adaptive interface. Why did it get rid of it just from scrolling over it? Advances in computing have done away with traditional input devices like keyboards. Instead, modern input peripherals are usually holographically displayed in front of the user at a height and angle for ergonomic use. Machines that use this interface detect a user through a microframe chip in the user's glove that keys into the computer. Once a user is accepted, motion acceler accelerometers in the user's gloves match his hand's location with that of a proportionate but smaller mirror set of controls inside the computer itself. As the user presses against the holographic field, force feedback in the glove kicks in, giving a slight resistance. A person can then feel his way through using a touch screen that isn't actually there. A simple toggle switch on the back of the hands allows the gloves to be turned off when not in use. Haptic interfaces have become so common that some individuals undergo cybernetic enhancement surgery to have the accelerometers implanted in their fingertips. Going bearskin is the sign of a committed computer user who no longer has to fuss with putting on gloves or cleaning them with alcohol wipes to get rid of the clammy hand smell. Interesting. Security mechs. The death of thousands of security and military personnel in the Battle of the Citadel was a loss felt throughout the galaxy. As large numbers of qualified personnel transferred to the Citadel to replace those that died, shorthanded security companies filled out their numbers with large-scale use of unmanned security robots. Commonly referred to as mechs, the security robots are typically grouped into light and heavy varieties. Light mechs come in a variety of sizes but are easily distinguished by opposable digits that help them in their versatile security roles. Heavy mechs lack digits and are simply weapon weapons platforms intended to keep the peace in high threat areas. The quadrupedal dog mech has a face composed of contraband detection sensors and is and is too and is too is armed. What? And it too is armed in case a perpetrator resists arrest. A typical security mech has an extremely limited virtual intelligence. Its duty is straightforward and narrow, usually to guard an area, run a friend or foe program to halt unauthorized access, and fire a set of pre-recorded voice commands to warn troublemakers away from the area. Light security mechs are equipped with irritant sprays and electroshockers to force compliance, and heavy mechs may be outfitted with flashbang stunners for similar purposes. When facing an opponent armed with a firearm, any mech will immediately resort to lethal anti-personnel weapons to neutralize the threat. If the situation turns violent rapidly enough, it may not even use its warnings. Security mechs are frowned upon for actual military duty. Though tough enough to survive most firefights, their virtual intelligence simply doesn't have the programming plan programming programming to plan an ambush, rescue a hostage, treat a wound, or any of countless other objectives that a soldier must be able to perform on the fly. 
Okay. Uh, we should probably read this drones one, right? Oh no, we did read this. We have read this. And our journal. I'm gonna read this stuff after we've been to the map. Right, off we go to the CIC. The kick, if you will. <laughs> Uh, I will be avoiding Kelly Commander, at all costs. A new message at your private terminal. Oh, God. What the hell are you talking about? I've not received any messages. Now Kelly's trolling us on board the ship. Kelly? I'm going to have Edith. Keep an eye on you. Oh my god, what has happened? Oh, what the hell? We're flying! Okay, I did not expect this. <laughs> uh, can I just look around, please? I wasn't expecting this. Sorry, Joker. Uh, <laughs> the hell, man? Key bindings, please. Uh, this is obviously for being uh, in world. Right, I have no idea what to do then, right. We need to read this then, so... Right. Dr. Morden Solus, biological weapons expert, light weapons training with Solarian Special Tasks Group. Dr. Mo Morden Solus is a Solarian biological weapons expert whose technology may hold the key to countering collector attacks. He's currently operating a medical clinic in the slum slums of Omega. Okay, that's where we're going, so... Omega-4 Relay, a Fuel Depot, a Mass Relay, the Omega-4 Relay. What on earth, man? Can we get an explanation for this? I don't know how to treat all of this. Okay, so the quests are listed here. So we've got three recruitment things here. We've got the professor, obviously, but we've got the veteran who is... Right. The veteran is the mercenary, right, Z Zaid. Expert in both personal and small unit combat, unparalleled mercenary soldier and bounty hunter, known for a willingness to get the job done no matter the cost. Zaid Masani is, without a doubt, the most feared mercenary and bounty hunter in the galaxy. His services have been re retained by Cerberus at an extremely high cost. He's currently awaiting pickup on Omega. Sure. And the other quest that was on there was Archangel, right? Archangel, a small unit small unit tactical expertise, Omnitool expert and noted sniper. Archangel is a mercenary commander whose operations are noted for their technical expertise and strategic brilliance. He's responsible for high-profile attacks on gang leaders on Omega and can likely be find, found there. He's on the purgatory. He's on Corliss. Council, obviously, is on the Citadel. Kasumi is on the Citadel. And stop the collectors. And these are all side quests. Okay, overwhelming.
Right, uh, I'm just going to go to Omega. What the hell? Is this a space station? Oh, it's an asteroid. Built and mined out... A Built in the mined out husk of a metallic asteroid, Omega has been a haven for criminals, terrorists and malcontents for thousands of years. At times the station has lain idle and abandoned for centuries only to be reactivated by a new group of outlaws seeking a fresh start. The space station's original elegant design has given way to haphazard expansion by scrabbling factions of every species. There's no central government or unifying authority on Omega. And nobody can recall a time there ever was one. 7.8 million? What the hell? How are there this many people living in a place with no laws? That's insane. The afterlife. I'll be playing Cyberpunk. That's the famous bar in, uh, in the original Cyberpunk. Alright, let's go. Is that an asteroid or are we being followed? How oh, were well, there 7 million people on this thing? We're being followed, man, because... That, uh, that ship that attacked the original Normandy was like, looked like an asteroid with a ship inside it, right? So we, I'm sure, unless, the, that, unless that's what the elusive man is on board. There you go. Sure. I've got the arc projector and the two pistols. Uh, they've got no options. I like Miranda's alternative outfit. Oh, hello. Uh, welcome to Omega. You're new here, aren't you? I can always tell. Allow me to... Batarian. Oh, hello, Mocklin. I was just... Leave, Fargot. Now. Oh, of course, Mocklin. Whatever she wants. Blasted scavengers. Welcome to Omega, Shepard. You know who I am? Of course. We had you tagged the moment you entered the Terminus systems. You're not as subtle as you think. Arya wants to know what brings a dead Spectre to Omega. I suggest you go to Afterlife now and present yourself. All right, sure. I'll keep that in mind. Afterlife, now. I'm receiving quarantine warnings about the slums where Dr. Morton Solis runs the clinic. Anticipate resistance at the transport station. I have also accessed messages between mercenary groups regarding plans to deal with the Archangel. There's a recruiting station at Afterlife that may have information on him. Ha! <laughs> Jesus, man. No, so the afterlife is right here. The transport depot is here. Wow, this place is big. Ken Salvage, Omega Market, Harrow's, Harrow's Emporium, the apartments, afterlife VIP area, the lower afterlife, the Merc Recruiter. This must be a cyberpunk reference, man. A bar where mercenaries go and meet. This must be a, a, a reference to the original Cyberpunk book. It has to be, man. Zaid! Please. Shut it. Okay. Please. You have to help me. No one said you could talk, jackass. You Zaid Masani? Yeah, that's me. You must be Commander Shepard. Hey, we have a galaxy to save. <laughs> okay. Who's this guy? My contacts told me we're picking up one man, not two. Batarian delinquent. Pissed off someone rich enough to hire me to go after him. And for my bring him in alive rates, even. Please. I didn't do it. 
hot! I said shut it. Tried to lead me on a chase all over the systems. You should have known better. These people always run to Omega. I saw if you worked for Cerberus before. Oh, hang on. You're gonna take him alive to your client first. What's gonna happen to him? I'm gonna turn him in for the bounty. Don't much care what happens after that. That's his job, right? He's a mercenary. We're in a criminal safe haven. I mean, we can't object to it. What's your relationship with Cerberus? Easy. Cerberus is paying me a lot of money to help you on your mission. That's the long and short. Not many mercs would take a suicide mission for the pay. Most mercs don't get an offer like the one Cerberus sent me. This mission doesn't sound like good business, but your elusive man can move a lot of credits. Sure. How much do you know about the mission and the collectors? I assume you've been briefed? I've done my homework. Cerberus sent me everything I needed to know. Alright. Welcome aboard. Good to have you, Zaid. We have a lot to do. That's what they tell me. I assume the elusive man told you about our arrangement. No. No. I guess he decided to leave that information out of the dossier. Good thing I asked. Picked up a mission a little while back, just before I signed on with Cerberus. Thought you might be interested. You heard the name Vito Santiago? He's the head of the Blue Suns. Runs oh. the whole organization. Yeah. Seems he recently captured an Elfell Ashland refinery on Zoya and is using their workers for slave labor. The company wants it dealt with. Sure. I'll make sure we get that done. Good. Get it out of the way so we can concentrate on being big goddamn heroes. That was a I light shot, turn right? I this thing in before it starts to stink. <laughs> I'll be locked and loaded next time you're ready to get some killing done. I like that guy. A ah, nice English accent for the crew. God, it's this point of the game, isn't it? We're picking up so many... We're picking up so many missions and stuff. And we've got this whole new map with the ship. It's just, I don't know, it's, yeah, that's freaked me out a bit. This, this is a cyberpunk reference to the core. It has to be, man. I don't mean that in a negative way at all. I just mean that's, this is what it is. It's got a neon sign. It's a nightclub. I mean, I shouldn't really mention it anymore. Just, that's what it is. Right, should we go to the markets first? I mean, we've been told to go straight here. Um. God, so many people to recruit. Uh, didn't they say Archangel? Can you stop doing that? Thank you. Uh, what did we learn about him then? Right. Can't talk to anyone. Talk to Miranda. Omega, what a piss hole. At least it keeps you on your toes. I've had to come here on business before. I feel like I need a shower afterward, in addition to normal decontamination. A piss hole? What the hell are you talking about? The term shit hole. Honestly. Have you ever heard anyone say piss hole before? That's ridiculous. You don't need to piss in a hole. That's the point of the saying. <laughs> you can piss anywhere. Stop messing with basic idioms of the English language. Okay. Yeah, let's just go. We're just going to go into the afterlife. Come on. 
on, let me in. Of course, they've got a uh, Elcor. Ari's expecting me. Oh, annoyed. <laughs> 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 Oh god, I've missed Are you, you Alcor. Oh. <laughs> oh, that's funny, man. Uh, I'm sure we'll get to explore this. You've let ten people in Warning. while I've been Uncaring. They will be Uncaring. Kylan? Hello there, Batarians. What are you looking at? Careful, buddy. Don't you have something better to do than pick fights with people you don't know? No, just the ones who get in my face. You see my gun. Do you really want to do this? I... Fine. You're off the hook. For now. Okay. That was weird. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to panic when we get one of those quick options, the quick interject options. I'm going to do an edgy walk. So one thing I don't like playing on mouse and keyboard, that's the one thing I like about a controller. You know, just with the stick, you can just choose how fast you walk, usually. Look at this place, really populated, that's cool. A bottle of brandy, we need one of those for the doctor, right? Aria. Ceres ice brandy, sure. Yeah, that's for Dr. Chakwa. Sure. I've been dead for two years, Miranda. Let me indulge. Okay, that was a bit strange. Okay, Arya's up here on the balcony. Yeah? I never know which pair of eyes to someone talking to a Batarian. Don't annoy them. Mercenary recruiter. Hello. I'm busy. Shh, shh, okay. All right, let's go talk to Aria. Aria Tloak and Asari. Is that Comrade? Same character model. Close enough. Okay, she looks mad. Stand still. What, what do you need to know? If you're looking for weapons, you're not doing a very good job. Can't be too careful with dead specters. That could be anyone wearing your face. I was told you're the person to talk to if I have questions. They're clean. Depends on the questions. You run Omega? <laughs> I am Omega. Echoey. But you need more. 
Everyone needs more something, and they all come to me. I'm the boss, CEO, queen, if you're feeling dramatic. It doesn't matter. Omega has no titled ruler and only one rule. Survival of the fittest, right? Don't fuck with Arya. Yeah, simple enough. I like it. Easy to remember. If you forget, someone will remind you. And then I toss your sorry ass out the nearest airlock. Yeah, all right, mate. So, what can I do for you? Now let's do the investigates first. Indifference about Shepherd. What can you tell me about Omega? So you must know what's what on Omega. Everything that's worth knowing. I don't usually give it out freely. Information is power. Mundane things you can find yourself. Take a walk in a back alley or buy one of the mercs a drink. Better yet, talk to the entertainers. They give great tours. Just don't waste my time. I don't know if those are tattoos, those markings, or if they're if she's born with them, but it looks like the kind of thing where if it was a tattoo, she'd be like, I want the tattoo to make it look like I'm frowning. <laughs> oh dear. You? Tell me how you got set up here. Oh, That's no. as privileged as information gets. I have many friends and enemies I keep at varying distances. I don't count you among either. We'll see how useful you are. Oh, is she gonna leave? Oh, phew. Short answer, mind your own damn business. Okay. Indifference towards me. One scan and we're straight to business. People are usually more concerned about who I am. Your death was downplayed, but hardly what I call a secret. I had to make sure it was really you. You could have been anyone, anything. Whatever anything. you need will come out on its own. I'm curious, but Omega doesn't really care about you. Oh, that's Carrie on Moss, isn't it? Yeah, that's Carrie on Moss. You guys told me she was in one of the games. That's Carrie on Moss. I like this. I like this lady now. <laughs> uh, do you know where Morden is? I'm looking for Morden Solus. Do you know where I can find him? The Solarian Doctor. Last I heard, he was trying to help plague victims in the quarantine zone. I always liked Morden. He's as likely to heal you as he is to shoot you. You know him? What can you tell me about him? Used to be part of the Solarian Special Tasks group. He's brilliant and dangerous. Just don't get him talking. He never shuts up. If you really need to find him, take a shuttle to the quarantine zone. No guarantee they'll let you in, of course. Okay, so he's in the quarantine zone. Should I be? T I feel like I should be taking notes because I feel like the map is a lot less. is a bit more unforgiving in this. Do you know where Archangel is? I'm trying to track down Archangel. You and half of Omega. You want him dead too? Oh god, he's got enemies here then. Why is everyone after him? He thinks he's fighting on the side of good. There is no good side to Omega. Okay. Everything he does pisses someone off. It's catching up to him. Yeah, great. Just the kind of guy I'm looking for. Really? Well, aren't you in- You're gonna make some enemies teaming up with Archangel. That's assuming you can get to him. He's in a bit of trouble right now. Why? What kind of trouble? The local Merc groups have joined forces to take him down. They've got him cornered, but it sounds like they're having trouble finishing him off. They've started hiring anybody with a gun to help them. Sounds like that might be our ticket in. They're using a private room for recruiting. Just over there. I'm sure they'll sign you up. Uh you got any extra information about him? What can you tell me about Archangel? Not as much as I'd like. He showed up here several months ago and started causing all sorts of problems. If you make your own laws, which everyone here does, he makes life difficult. He's reckless and idealistic, but he seems to know enough to stay clear of me. So is this place going to be like the new Citadel? Because if they were going to, if they were, if they're going to hire such a heavy hitting actress. To play this character, it kind of feels like we're going to be coming back here quite often. So who's after him? Which Merc groups are after Archangel? Blue Suns, Eclipse, Blood Pack. They're Omega's major players. Unless they're at war, you'll never see them together. 
But one thing they hate more than each other is Archangel. Um, what do you think about him? Do you hate Archangel? I don't have time for hate, but I distrust them all equal. For now, I'm happy just to let them kill each other. Sure. Thanks for the help. I appreciate the help. See if you still feel that way when the mercs realize you're here to help him. All right. Thanks for your help, Arya. I'll tell Neo you said hi. Sounds like I don't have much time to waste. You've got all the time in the world. Archangel? Not so much. Okay, so she made it sound like we should go and do the Archangel thing first. Because he's in trouble, right? What's the shortcut for the journal? I'm pressing J and it's not working. What? Oh, whatever. Okay, sign up with the mercenary gangs by speaking to the recruiter in one of Afterlife's private rooms. Sure. We were told to get the professor first. But I'll take that time warning about Archangel seriously, so uh, we'll go to the mercs. Merc recruiter there. Okay. Time are we on? Yeah, let's start this. Uh, let's make a quick save. Hey there, buddy. Are you recruiting? Mm. Why don't you step inside? You'll get paid and the job's done, just like everyone else. Who's next? Well, aren't you sweet? You're in the wrong place, honey. Stripper's quarters are that way. Wow, not even a smile. So you're here to fight then? I was drinking, I couldn't press the button. It prob probably wasn't smart to get on his wrong side, to be fair. Um, here to fight? Sure. You could say that. Standard fee is 500 credits each. You get paid when the job's done. If you die, your friends don't collect your share. You'll need your own weapons and armor. Looks like you got that covered. And no, this does not make you a member of the Blue Sun's Eclipse of the Blood Pack. You are a freelancer, period. Any questions? Um... Plan of attack? What do we do once we're there? How do we get to Archangel? The mercs will tell you when you get there. Last I heard, they were putting the freelancers into scouting groups. They attack in waves to distract Archangel while we try to get past his defenses. Uh, the only reason I didn't ask the other op the, the original option was because I thought I, d I didn't want it to look like we were looking to help him, but I guess that's not part of it. A distraction? So we're just fodder for his bullets? If you don't like it, don't sign up. But if you do your job right, it's easy credits. Besides, what are the odds he can kill all of you? Sure, the Merc Band Assault. Why are the Mercs working together to take down Archangel? You haven't been on Omega long, huh? He does everything he can to screw with us. Shipments go missing. Operations are compromised. Every month it gets worse. Tarek and the other bosses are tired of losing credits. And men. Tarek? Is he a heavy hitter? How many Merc bosses are involved in this attack? Yeah, Tarek runs the Blue Suns, but all three bosses are overseeing the operation. Jareth's leading the Eclipse and Garm's the head of the Blood Pack. Tarek's in charge, but the others would never say that. I'm surprised they're in on this at all, but I guess getting rid of Archangel is worth it. Sure. Why him? Seems like a lot of trouble for just one guy. You had a whole team, but we dealt with them. Now oh, he's just right. one guy. But he's got the advantage. It's his base of operations and he knows we're coming. He's planned for an attack like this. We've lost a lot of men trying to get to him already. So we're on his turf. It's gonna be tough to get to him. Like chasing a forge out of the sewer pipes. But that's where we're recruiting. If we just keep throwing fighters at him, we'll get him eventually. And where is it? Where's the attack taking place? Archangel's base of operations. He's been hiding right under our noses. 
I can't tell you exactly where you're going, but we'll get you there. Okay, uh, so uh, I'm worried that we're having to pick between squad mates here. That we can't get to both. I don't know. Let's go. Where do we go? Just head over to the transport depot outside the club. One of our boys will take you from there. Send in the next one. Hey, is this where I sign up? How old are you, buddy? You look a little young to be freelancing as a merc. I'm old enough. I grew up on Omega. I know how to use a gun. So does Archangel. I can handle myself. Besides, I just spent 50 credits on this pistol and I want to use it. Get your money back. Hey, Woody! Trust me, kid. You'll thank me later. Was that a renegade option? Guess so. No, it was a paragon option. Interesting. I don't like time sensitive stuff, but fair enough. Um I'm worried that this is gonna lock out the professor, but uh, I don't think so. Alright, let's go. Uh, where did it say to go? To the tran to the transport depot. Alright, uh, I'm sure we'll be able to go for the professor as well. Oh, we still got no stamina. Come on, let me in. <laughs> Annoyed. Right, I'm just gonna go straight there, man. If we're under equipped, then sure. Okay, so we've got one extra squad member. We've got uh, the uh, mercenary guy. Uh, let me just check what that quest was for the warlord because it was to do with the blood sun, blue suns oh but he's on callus okay, so he's he's not here hello i'm on the mission i hope you're ready archangel's been annihilating you freelancers let's go ready when you are get in okay so i'm wondering if we're gonna have to just avoid combat here Oh, snap! Okay. I feel like... Um, I'm really kind of overwhelmed by this potential, like, 13-person squad we're gonna have. Can we have... Is it a four-person squad? No, it's still a three-man squad. Uh, I'm worried that we're a bit squishy because these two are both biotics, right? And we're an engineer. We could do with the we could do with the heavy a heavy hitting um, character, right? Overload, warp, slam, pole, incendiary ammo, barrier. Maybe we shouldn't take Miranda. <laughs> heavy pistols and shotguns. She's an out and out biotic, right? Has he got appearance options? No. What do we do? What do we do? What do we do? What do we do? I feel like we should take Miranda and Zaid, to be honest. Yeah, all right, Zaid. Let's give him a try. Okay, he's got uh, some upgrades to get though. Um, rank two concussive shot to unlock. So disrupt, uh, rips through shields and shreds synthetic targets. Sure, mercenary veteran increases his weapon damage and his health. Sure. Uh, let's put two points into uh, 
Oh, I didn't even read what this is. A massive blast that propels enemies with bone crushing force. We need uh, loyalty for inferno grenades. Sure. You've got a point I can't use. And we've got hack in and incinerate now. Sure. All right. Archangel. With Zaid. It's about time they sent me someone who looks like they can actually fight. They tell you what we're up against? Nope. The recruiter was a little vague. We wouldn't get many hires if everyone knew the truth. Archangel's holed up in a building at the end of the boulevard over there. He's got superior position, and the only way in is over a very exposed bridge. Okay. It's a killing ground. But he's getting tired, making mistakes. We'll have him soon enough. Sweet. You guys have a plan? A small team is waiting to infiltrate his hideout, but we need to draw Archangel's fire so they can move in. And that's where we come in. We need exactly. to keep him alive, though. He'll be on a distraction team. Head straight over the bridge and keep Archangel busy so the infiltration team can sneak in behind him. That's goddamn suicide. Pretty much. But you look like you can handle it. Head up to the boulevard and get to the third barricade. Talk to Sergeant Katka. He'll tell you when to go in. Uh, what do you know about Archangel? What do you know about Archangel? I'm the wrong guy to ask. I just do logistics. Tarek and the other Merc bosses have been dealing with him for a while now. All right. But don't be surprised if they're not thrilled about talking to a freelancer. He's on the infiltration team. Where's the infiltration team now? On the far side of the bridge near his hideout. But they can't get any closer without being seen. How did they get across? How'd they get that close without being seen? More distractions. Tarek used a gunship to keep Archangel busy. We were able to sneak a few men into his hideout before he took it down, but they're stuck there. We need to keep Archangel focused on the bridge so he doesn't find them and wipe them out. All right. Uh, how, how are we going to survive on the bridge? So the bridge is the only way to his hideout? Exactly. Archangel collapsed all the underground passageways and sealed the doors to the lower levels. We've got teams digging, but it's taking too long. If they can get the gunship flying again, that'll help. But I'm hoping the infiltration team will finish the job and we can all go home. Sure. Where's this gunship? They were using a gunship to take out one guy? This is mad. Yeah, an archangel shot it down. He didn't destroy it, but he knew just where to hit it to disable it. It wasn't even a fair fight. At least not for us. Is this, is this guy a Krogan? He sounds indestructible. I better go find Sergeant Kafka. Good idea. Watch yourself on the boulevard. Archangels killed dozens out there already. God. In's gonna be easy. Out's gonna be a bitch. <laughs> One thing at a time, Zaid. Let's find him first. Then we'll figure out how to get back. So, uh, have we got multiple um, ways of approaching this? Talk to Sergeant Kafka at the 3rd Brigade. Oh, we've got no map. No way, man. This is going to be... Nails. Shepard, I've scanned the area, but I am unable to plot any other paths to Archangel. Sure. Guess we're going with the Mercs. The heavy mechs and gunship possess considerable firepower. Weakening them before leaving will improve your chances. Heavy mechs and gunships. Guys, what are you doing? Is that him? Heavy mechs and gunships, got you. Right, we're gonna we're gonna need to make a hard save here. I can't draw my weapons just yet. A 
As the first wave goes in, the infiltration team will attempt to take Archangel by surprise. How is this guy this entrenched? I don't entrenched? expect much from the freelancers. When they fail, we are up next. Do you need something? Uh, who are you? You lead the Eclipse? You figure that out by yourself? Uh-oh. I'm Jareth. I run Omega's Eclipse. What do you need, freelancer? Archangel. What do you know about Archangel? His life expectancy is shortening quickly. Is that it? Nobody seems to know anything about him. Look around. You'll learn what you need to know. He's smart, he's resourceful, and he's dangerous. But we've got him cornered. He won't be making fools of us much longer. Can sure. I assist you further? Any extra details? Where did he come from? Yeah. Who is he? Even his team didn't know that. Maybe we'll know more once we have his body. Of course, it really won't matter then. Uh, what about your gang? Why are Eclipse on Omega in the first place? Since you care so much, Eclipse controls almost 20% of Omega. Our transports and mechs keep the Ezo moving. Sounds very organized. Eclipse runs like a well-oiled machine, but Omega is anything but organized. It's a constant battle for control. Then Archangel comes along and complicates things even more. Why does Archangel give you so much trouble? Ask him. I'm just here to make as much money as I can. We didn't come to Omega to be constrained by laws and regulations. He'll regret ever coming to Omega, I promise you. Okay, what has he done to you personally? Disrupted your business? Seems like this is personal for you. He raided one of my transports last month, killed two of my best operatives. One of them was my brother, so yes, it's pretty damn personal. Okay, what's the plan then? So the infiltration team is the main focus of the attack. Tarek's plan, not mine. He doesn't want to lose any more men, so he's throwing you freelancers at the pro- Archangel's not going anywhere, so I suppose there's no harm in trying. Who knows? Maybe you'll get lucky. Hmm, <laughs> cowards. So you're just gonna hide here while the freelancers get killed? Precisely. You're paid to be a distraction, nothing more. Whether you survive or not is up to you. Sure. I'll get going. Good idea. Okay, codex entries, the eclipse. Right, where... Okay, we've got nowhere to go in any direction, so this seems reasonably line linear. Message to Tarek. Tar Tarek, I've spoken to Garm, and he and his men are on board. Assuming this operation is successful, we can count on high morale and extensive buy-in from the men. From the losses we've already taken, possi possibility exists that we won't have the men needed to continue on to the next objective. It's clear, though, and none of our organizations would be ready to move on Aria without the assistance of the other two. Jareth. Interesting. Oh god, we can give that to Aria. No way. That's quality. Unlucky fellas. I think you're I think she's gonna have you all killed. Okay, we've got options. Jesus. Uh, smuggling accounts. Find matching code segments. Oh, here we. Oh no. Okay, I didn't read that because I thought it was the same as the other ones. Heavy mech diagnostic se uh, station. Bypass friend or foe ID. Connect the matching pins to bypass security. Targeting parameters reconfigured. I should slow them down. Perfect. It'll be hostile if they activate it. Yeah, so we're trying to slow them down so we can get to him, right? Find the matching code segments, locate and select the code that matches the code displayed. At, oh, at the top left corner of the screen, you guys can't see that crap. Avoid red codes, find all matches before time runs out to hack through security. Where's the... T oh, right. 
Oh, I found it. Crap. I don't know what I press. Right, there's the target code, but what do I press? No, no, there it is. What do I press though? Seriously, man. Like, that's it there. What do what do I press? <laughs> I think it might be space. For fuck's sake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Orange, white, orange, blue, orange, blue, orange. Oh god, this is complicated. That is, I, that I, I really like that, now that I know to press space, sorry. That is fun. I really like these puzzle stuff, this puzzle stuff, man. The episode's getting a little long, but I feel like I can't leave it here. I've got to have to leave it here. Alright, that's a way to end it. Got that hacking mini game. My guys, honestly, this is awesome. Like, I feel... I feel kind of lost. Like, I'm at the start of a, another big adventure. Uh, I feel really overwhelmed. Uh, I don't know what impact any decision that I'm making is going to have. Whether going for this squad mate is going to mean we can't go get the other guy, the Solarian. I don't know. Uh, I feel completely lost in the void and it's great. Honestly, I feel... Yeah. It, this feels completely different as well. Um, I feel really... I, I feel like we're not safe at all. Do you know what I mean? We're not this, like, all-important spectre. We're just kind of another speck out here. So, yeah, we're going to go we're going, we're going to go and continue to look for Archangel in the next episode. So, I hope you've enjoyed this one. We've made our way to speak to Arya here. Uh, it was fascinating to speak to her. We've got some information to give to her as well. So, we'll leave it there. I hope you enjoyed this one. Leave me a like if you did. And just remember, everyone, never trust an uncrate. <laughs> See you back on Omega.